All right, hey guys, and welcome back, or welcome if you are new to the channel. Now, today's video is going to be fun. It's going to be all about the saltwater aquarium. So as you know, I have a 55-gallon reef tank sump, the works, everything, and it's doing really, really well. It's really thriving, but there's been some corals that I've wanted recently. So I went on Facebook, and I like asked a whole bunch of people, like, hey, where can I get this coral? Someone said they had it, and they would send some to me. So basically, I went ahead and you know gave him some money. He sent the box, and that brings us up to where we are now. So I'm going to go ahead and throw you back to some footage of me actually unboxing the coral. By the way, thank you so much to the guy who sent it over. I'm not going to use his name, obviously, for privacy reasons, but you know who you are. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and throw you back to some footage now when I actually unbox the coral. Okay, so none of the lighting's trash. We'll deal with that in a minute. But I just got home from school, and the box was delivered about an hour ago. So I guess let's just go ahead and just get right into this and just open it up. So the coral were shipped priority mail, obviously in this priority mail box. And it took about two days, so they actually came relatively fast. Now, mostly people do one day shipping with corals, but I felt that the other day wouldn't really be that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this open and we'll check it out. So got a nice, nice bag on top. Lots of paper towels, good to cushion them. Got a towel. So it looks like we have three bags, which is what he told me he sent. The water is pretty cloudy and murky, so you can't really see much. Disgusting! But there is a big thing of Xenia in there. Same thing right there. Again, the water is pretty murky from being in transit. So we got those two. And then last but not least, there is one more in here. Now, they all look very shriveled up and not doing too good, obviously, because they're in a bag. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all these open and start acclimating them. I'll show you how I do that. Let's go ahead and go to the tank real fast. So for those of you who have not seen it, here is my 55-gallon reef aquarium. I'm sure plenty of you have seen it. We've got some nice tropical fish, obviously. There's a starfish in there, there's a cleaner shrimp somewhere in there, and we got tons of corals. All the corals and fish and pretty much everything has been thriving for a long time, so I'm really happy to add these new corals, hoping they'll do great as well. But just like that, I went ahead and got all the Xenia in. That is what it looks like right now. Obviously, it's disgusting and just not doing well because it's in nasty water. I'm gonna go ahead and start my drip, just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down a little bit. Now all we have to do is wait for this right here to fill up this container completely full of my water. What that does is it allows the coral to get used to my tank's parameters. So I'll be back once this is full, then we can dip the coral. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, so it's been just about an hour and the Xenia has went ahead and completely drip acclimated. So it's hard for you to see, but that's kind of what it looks like right now. It's honestly not looking the absolute best, but I'm hoping once we dip it and kind of get it prepped and go into the tank, it'll be good to go. Anyway, now we need to go ahead and prep the dip. So I have reef dip right here, and then I have a measuring cup. I'm gonna fill this up with two cups full of water and then dose this obviously according to the dosage. Now, honestly, there is a picture of Xenia right there on the bottle. Anyway, this stuff will basically go ahead and kill off any pests. Not that there's pests on the coral, but it also helps with stuff like brown jellying and basically prevents the coral from like getting too stressed out. And it also helps with the slime coat, which they lose a lot of in shipping. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep that and then we'll go ahead and start dipping them. So I got everything completely prepared for the dip. We have a little under two cups of water and then with the reef dip right here, I'm gonna put one mil of this stuff. It's just an iodine dip. It's honestly nothing crazy. Go ahead and suck some of this up. Go ahead and mix this up with the water. It will kind of darken up for a second. Go back to clear. Now all we do is take the coral, which in this case, I'm honestly just gonna go in here with my hand. Hopefully we don't overflow. So I got all the coral in that cup. Now we're just gonna sit, wait about 20 minutes and we can put it in the tank. I just don't look good in this lighting for some reason. I look like orange and red. The colors are messed up. Anyway, we got the tank. It's drained a little bit. And that's because I turned off my sump and I turned off my wave maker. So basically there is no water movement in the tank, which is exactly what we want. Flashback. Here's our little container of coral. Now, obviously, Xenia is a soft coral, meaning it doesn't really attach, like it's not attached to a coral plug like most LPS corals are. It kind of just attaches itself to the rocks. Well, it's kind of free floating right now, and if we had the pumps on, it would just blow everywhere. So I turn the pumps off, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of here, put it into the tank now that it's completely acclimated and used to the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw you to a time lapse. I'm gonna take all the Xenia, place it around the tank, and hopefully it'll go ahead and grab a hold of the rock. So I got all the Xenia set up. Quick little walk around. We have some right there, some up in that crevice, a little bit down here. Obviously it's hard to see right now because the water's all cloudy. And then the last little small pieces I placed on this top rock. Oh, and there's a tiny piece down there. 
Anyway, now I know this is gonna be extremely hard to get this to stay because literally as the fish swim by, it falls down. So I'm hoping it stays in place, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave the wave maker off for a little bit, wait about 30 minutes before I turn my return pump on, and then I'll update you in a couple hours or even maybe tomorrow to see kind of how everything is taking hold. One eternity later. And just like that, one day later, this is where the gone wrong you see in the title comes from. So it all started off pretty well. You know, the Xenia looked a little bit stressed, but it was fine. Well, overnight this happened. It basically melted to nothing. Flashback. People do one day shipping with corals, but I felt that the other day wouldn't really be that bad. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Like there's literally a spot right there of it where it just melted away. This whole rock had a whole bunch and as you can see it pretty much just melted and just disappeared. So there's a big spot right there, melted Xenia, which there was one like put down there and it just completely dissolved and disappeared. And there's also a little fragment of one down there. So yeah, that's that. The coral, it's not doing hot, it's not doing good, it's not thriving. That's where the gone wrong comes in. You know, when you ship live things, whether it be live fish, live animals, anything like that, stuff like this is bound to happen. I really can't blame it on anyone in specific. Maybe it was the reef dip I used. Maybe it's my tank parameters didn't perfectly match his. I drip acclimated, so I don't know what the problem was there. Or they could have just really got beat up in shipping. Anyway, it's really no big deal. You know, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do. I'll just buy more corals in the future from a local fish store. But with that said, we can go ahead and check on some of the other animals. Come on, guys. I know it's your favorite time of the day. Get your food. Yeah, these guys love food. I mean, they're koi. They, they eat anything, but they really love their pellets. Sometimes they get watermelon. They get vegetables sometimes. They even love bananas. They'll eat, like, whole bananas. They'll just, like, pick at it till it's gone in, like, five minutes. But, I mean, they're koi. They eat anything. They love food. The pond's doing really, really nice. I need to clean the skimmer and the plants are doing good as well. As you can see, the elephant ears are thriving. Water lilies are being water lilies. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Koi pond is doing really, really nice, nice, happy, and fed. Much like the koi, the ducks are being ducks as well. I mean, as you can see, they're literally trying to eat me, but it's fine. Both ducks are doing really, really good though. Stop biting me. Stop biting me. Ow! Actually, while we're here at the ducks, they obviously need new water. I get them new water every day because they make it disgusting. Just gotta pull this out. Dump all that nasty stuff out. Of course, the ducks came to bite me. Then we just hose all this nasty stuff off. Okay, so I got it mostly cleaned out. Now all we have to do is fill it back up with clean water. I'll also go ahead and check their food right here. This is just their pellets in this like little automatic dispenser. I'll go ahead and make sure it's still full. And it looks like we're running a little bit low, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the food real quick. Actually, I'm gonna do the same thing real quick on their oyster shells and make sure they're good with these too. And we actually still have plenty in here. It's probably filled up to right about there. We got tons of oyster shells left. Now all we do to refill up their food is take the big bag of food right here, get a nice scoop of the pellets, and then just dump it right down there. Do that about three more times and we're good to go. All right, duck's food is full. Water's good, just gotta screw this back on. Now we gotta get the ducks to go back in their cage. And just like that, the ducks are all good to go. But last but not least for the day is I'm gonna be taking my 10 gallon tank, which is under my 55 gallon. This is just fresh water and it's breeding red cherry shrimp. Well, I threw some guppies in here to grow out a little bit and they are now completely grown up enough to go into one of my bigger tanks. So I'm gonna net all these guys out and then replace them with some baby platies so the baby platies can go ahead and do the same thing the guppies did. So I cut out all of the guppies, obviously, and they're gonna go ahead and acclimate into this tank. There they are in the little cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and let those guys acclimate and then they'll be in this planted tank. Now replacing those guppies in the 10 gallon, I'm gonna be getting all the baby platies out of this kind of fish tub thing. Like the water level's gone down and raccoons keep getting into it. So I'm gonna take all the baby platies out of here, put all the baby platies in that 10 gallon that we just saw the guppies in. And then I'm gonna take the big platies and move them to another tank where they can breed with other platies. It'll all make sense. Okay, so I took all the rocks and all the decor out of this little tub right here so I can go ahead and catch the platies a lot easier. I'm gonna wait for this to settle up a little bit more and then we'll go net all these fish out. In the meantime, these guys have been acclimating for quite a while. So these guys are just gonna go ahead and get dumped right in to the community tank. There's the small guppies in there. As you can see, they're right there at the top and they're gonna get used to everything and be pretty good. There's a lot of cool colors in here. Like there's that blue one, 
There's some reds, some blues. There's a lot of cool colors. Okay, so I got all the fish out of there. These are the adults that will be going into the pond to breed the other pond. And then here are all the babies that will go in the tank to grow out. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of them and they're very, very tiny. So these guys right here are just gonna float in this 10 gallon. I'm not gonna film me adding them, it's just dumping fish into a tank. They're gonna acclimate and then I'm gonna go ahead and get them into this tank to grow out. And then I know it's loud because of the air conditioning, but these guppies will just be dumped right in here. Those were the adult guppies. This is a guppy breeding tank. You can't see it, but there's a whole bunch of guppies in here. Small, big, just everything just breeding in this 110 gallon tank. We didn't have to acclimate them because this is outside. The other pond was outside, so same temperature. But these guys are now good to go. Anyway, that is gonna be pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video, obviously, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. Good bye.